Hello, I'm a Greek geek because I'm 50% Greek and 100% a geek. So this has been out for a while, so I'm guessing that you have seen the TV show by now. I'm not sure in the UK, then I am very sorry for you that you still have to wait. Please lower your blaster. Have them lower theirs first. We have you four to one. I like those odds. There isn't really a main plot to this TV show. A lot of the show is just the Mandalorian going around and doing these different jobs for all these different people. And eventually he wants to put together a crew and he just goes around to everyone he met in his journeys and goes, hey, I'm putting together a team. And everyone's just like, you son of a bitch, I'm in. That's the plot. And he picks up a little baby Yoda on the way which has taken the internet by storm and is probably the main reason why this show is so damn popular. Pedro Pascal is Din Djarin aka, aka the Mandalorian, aka the Mando. You get it. He has lots of names. So he does a very good job of portraying this Mandalorian who wears his armor 99.9% .9 of the time. And we get a lot of expression and character from him, even though we can't even see his face most of the time. And that's really good. He's kind of a Clint Eastwood, Wild West kind of character. He doesn't take shit from anyone. He has kind of eh, morals. He'll kill people without hesitating, but he does have a kind of soft and tender side, especially when it comes to Baby Yoda. I do like his character. Cara Dune is portrayed by Gina Carano, and she is a very tough woman so she used to be part of the rebel alliance but left for reasons and i liked her interactions with the mandalorian and how she talked about her previous conflicts with the empire and that's the main reason why she joins him in the end is because he's fighting against the empire and i think she still feels a need to help take down the remnants of this empire. Baby Yoda, the character that has pretty much, I'm not gonna say saved this series, but this series is so much more popular because this character is in it. So he doesn't say anything, he's 50 years old and he just does the most adorable cute things. And that's why everyone loves him, or her. Don't really establish if it's a boy or a girl actually, now that I think about it. I do like that Baby Yoda is actually like a puppet, not just fully CGI. So I really like that there's still room for puppetry and those kind of effects for these type of shows. And there's also IG-11 who is voiced by Taika Waititi of all people. He voices an assassin droid, which is a super, super badass assassin droid that just takes down everything easily. His personality is like that of a child. He'll like take things literally until he's programmed later on and he is just essentially a bodyguard droid for Baby Yoda. Do like that droid. And finally, I'll talk about Grief Cargo, which is portrayed by Carl Weathers. I like his character too. He's like the head honcho when it comes to the Bounty Hunters Guild. He'll give out jobs to members and make sure that everyone gets their equal share of jobs and stuff like that, paying them and making sure everyone gets their cut. I'm going to say he does what I'm going to call loyalty gymnastics because he just changes teams constantly. He's fighting against a Mandalorian. Then he joins a Mandalorian, but then he's going to betray him, but then he changes his mind and he's works for the Empire, but now he doesn't. So he just, like an, a bounty hunter, just works for whoever is just going to pay the most or he, who he feels is the best one to work with. There are so many other characters as well, but I'm not going to touch on all of them because then this review is going to go on for far too long. About giving everybody something that they like. Some people are very into the effects, some people more into the characters, and we you try to represent that across the board. But really, it's a very positive environment. So all the episodes are directed by different people. We've got like Taika Waititi directing an episode, Dave Filoni, who is like George Lucas's successor when it comes to Star Wars. He was the main force behind Star Wars Clone Wars. And I love that show to death. And I am pleased to see that he's involved with this as well. And Jon Favreau as well. And I'm also surprised that Bryce Dallas Howard actually directed an episode in this. She directed an episode and I was quite surprised by that. But it was good. It was a good episode. All the episodes are good, but there are some that are definitely a lot slower, but I'll get into that a bit later. Directed by a lot of talented people. The songs of Eon's past tell of battles between Mandalore the Great and an order of sorcerers called Jedi that fought with such powers. It is an enemy? No. Its kind were enemies, but 
that this individual is not. I'm going to touch on a couple of things that this series builds on in the Star Wars universe. What I liked is that the Empire isn't completely destroyed. So after Return of the Jedi, about a year after that, that's when the Empire essentially crumbled and a sec section of them went to the Unknown Regions to go build the First Order. But I like to see that there's still some remnants after that that are still controlling small sectors of the galaxy and still run their own thing and just trying to hold on. And that's what I like, because in the Legends, it's not canon anymore, but in Legends, the Empire fragmented it in all these different factions that were led by Grand Moffs and Admirals like Grand Admiral Thrawn. And they all were fighting each other and the New Republic for their own little motives I guess and Grand Moff Gideon is like kind of the main foe in this but not until like later in the season I liked him a lot and it's good to see that there's still remnants of the Empire still holding on and somehow he got his hands on the fucking Darksaber somehow now I'm not completely up to date with Rebels but I do know that Sabine Wren at some point in the Rebels story she got her hands on the Darksaber I'm um, not really sure what happened after that or because I do believe that Rebels takes place just before A New Hope and this takes place a few years after the Return of the Jedi. So somehow he's gotten his hands on the Darksaber. So now he has it. I'm interested to see what happens in the next season. And there's other members of Yoda's species. In canon now, we only have Yoda and Yaddle. They're both Grand Ma Masters on the Jedi Council in the prequels. Yaddle we didn't see much of, just like one little scene she was in the background. On the last episode, it they hint at there might be a whole planet of Ryota's species. So we're not really sure what his species is. It doesn't even have a name, hence why the child is called Baby Yoda, because we don't know what else to call him. And I loved seeing the flashback scenes of Din Djarin when his hometown or home planet of whatever it was was being attacked by the droids during the Clone Wars. I loved seeing that, just seeing this tie into the Clone Wars. We see the, all these super battle droids just taking out all these civilians and that. And eventually we see that Death Watch came in and saved them and that's how Din Djarin got caught up with the Mandalorians and how he adopted their culture. And I like how their culture and ideals is what ho what is the Mandalorians. It's not necessarily a people or a race of people, it's an ideal and a culture that they all uphold. I really liked the fight scenes in this. They have a very Old West shootout kind of feel, especially with the one-on-one -on -one stuff. That's really good as well. But the final episode with the big shootout and the holdout against Grand Moff Gideon and his stormtroopers, that was an epic scene. But any scene where IG-11 is just blasting everybody, always so cool because his head spins around. He's got like 360 vision and just takes out absolutely everybody with pinpoint accuracy. It is so cool. There's many other awesome, awesome, awesome action scenes as well. One involving some pirates and some peasants and an ATST and shootouts involving Mandalorians and mercenaries, bounty hunters, and stormtroopers, and others. There's just so much action, and it's very, very enjoyable. Now, I like how the Mandalorian, like, he's a very good fighter, but he's not completely invincible. He gets his ass kicked quite a few times, and someone has to come in and save him. So that really humanizes him. He's not just some god who can take on everybody and just can beat everybody with no help, unlike some other characters in the Star Wars canon now. Jack the Gratu. Production design, as I said before, it has a very Wild West kind of feel. They're in the desert a lot. They go to different desert planets and it captures the Wild West kind of feel. But it does also do a good job of catching the original trilogy feel. Everything kind of feels dirty and not upgraded in a while and kind of stagnant, which is how the kind of technology and the look of the original tril trilogy was. And it looks really good. They did a fantastic job of making it feel like it just happened just after Return of the Jedi. <laughs> So I know I've just been just talking about all the great things about this show, but where this show lacks is the pacing. 
Um, there are some episodes that just feel like filler. The episodes are about 30 minutes long and there's eight episodes and there's filler in this. Like there's episodes that don't really do that much other to introduce some characters. And sometimes they introduce characters that don't have anything to do with the final act of this season. That They might come in later on and they might develop them later on in later seasons, but there are just some episodes where he's just not doing much and it doesn't seem to tie into anything else. And that's a bit frustrating, especially when you want them to move the plot along. But that's my only issue with the pacing of this TV show. So would I recommend this show? Yes, I would. It is a fantastic Star Wars show. And it's our first Star Wars live action TV show as well. It is really, really good. Um, highly reckon, recommend you watch it. Even if you're not a huge Star Wars fan, I reckon there is a lot to enjoy in this TV show. And if you're new to my channel and you like Star Wars, science fiction, fantasy, those kind of things, I talk about them a lot on this channel. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing. If not, that's fine. <laughs> thank you for watching my video. Have a nice day. So as always, thank you for watching me ramble on about a TV show for a few minutes. I really do appreciate it. Thank you again. I'll catch you next time.